Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the beginning of another week, Monday morning. It is Monday, isn't it? I, you know, you're like, oh, I can't remember what day of the week it is. Um, so we've got our wonderful lives happening again this week. So today we've got um, sleep tips with our wonderful Marianne Timms. Um, tomorrow I'm doing a whole talk about why do we ask you to drink lots of water and explain to you what that's all about, which hopefully will be interesting for some. Um, Wednesday we've got Tracy Winterbourne coming on doing all about um, uh, facial reflexology and some skincare tips, that kind of thing, with her beautiful oils and different products. And then Thursday, maybe we'll have a break from the day. And then Friday, we've got the lovely Lorna Withers back doing all about the fire element this time. We did five elements. Last week was with this week, she's doing about a fire. So that'll be really interesting. So hopefully you'll want to come and join us for that. So when we start talking about our um, foundations of health. Do you remember we were talking about the five foundations of health and we were talking about how it's, you know, putting nutrition to one side, how the different foundations are really important. So let's just go through them again. So it's um, breath work, breathing, it's grounding, it's drinking enough water, it's exercise, and most importantly, sleep. So that's what we're covering today. We're focusing on sleep, sleep tips, how to get you sleeping as well as we possibly can. So um, with no ado, I'm gonna bring on our lovely Marianne Timms and we're gonna start talking all things sleep. So here we go. So ready to welcome Marianne. So three, two, one. Oh, there you are, as if by magic. Beam me up Good morning. Seat. How are I'm you? In, I'm very well. Can you hear me with my headphones on? Yeah, no, we can yeah. hear you beautifully. I, mean, I, will, I will ask the people watching if they can just give us a thumbs up. They can hear us, but I can certainly hear you beautifully. Excellent. So, yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm great because I sleep really well. <laughs> I just want, I'm really, really lucky. You know, I know how important sleep is. So, um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so there's, there's all different types of problems with sleep, isn't there? Oh, we're getting a thumbs up from Isabel. Hello, Isabel. Thank you very much. Um, so um, there's all different problems with sleep. There's a the problem of actually getting to sleep, tossing and turning, not being able to get to sleep. Then there's the problem of, you know, sort of waking up frequently through the night or waking up in the night and then unable to get back to sleep. And that feeling of waking up, not feeling sort of refreshed. So those are the kinds of problems that people talk about. And we encourage anyone that's watching to write any questions they've got around their sleep Onto the, chat, onto the chat, we can see it, and then we'll make sure we respond. So, um, Marion, we're gonna talk about some top tips for helping people to sleep well. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about your story about how, you know, why sleep became such an interesting subject for you. Um, okay, so my background is a biomedical scientist in the health service for the best part of 27 years on and off. Um, and I left that field to become uh, retrained as a therapist, as a reflexologist. And it was through networking reflexology for sleep and other associated problems that I was introduced to uh, another idea to help the sleep, which was a, a range of products, which I'm not going to I'm not talking specifically about today. And then people had encouraged me to specialize. And knowing that a lot of people don't sleep anyway, I thought, you know what, it's time I specialized in sleep. And at the moment, sleep deprivation, sleep issues, as you say, falling asleep, staying asleep, they're rife. And I think a lot of what's going on in the current climate has um, impacted that as well. So I'm going to talk about some things that perhaps people haven't thought about, or if they have, they haven't implemented. So it's up to them to implement. It. Yeah. Fabulous. That sounds really good. So you come, like you say, have you had, did you have sleep problems yourself in the past, or have you? Um... Mm. Uh, one of my children, from birth to 23 months, decided that they weren't going to sleep. I'd already got an older one and uh, was murder. absolute murder. I was emotional, I was irrational, uh, not in a very good place because sleep, de sleep deprivation is used as torture in some parts of the world. Um, you don't need to go many days without sleep before you become a not very nice person. Your focus, your mental clarity, your judgment isn't very good. It's In fact, it's very dangerous to operate machinery or drive it's almost it's worse than being under the influence of alcohol in many respects um so yeah i've been there done that um fortunately she did start sleeping um at the time i didn't know a lot about sleep and if i knew then what i knew now hindsight is a great thing <laughs> well, that's good and it may well be that well, let's let's talk a bit more about the general tips but it might well be that we might have some different type of tips for new mums or maybe it's just going to be the same sort of um, information that you're going to be sharing 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, would, you, would you like me to sort of start talking about? Yeah, let, let's pop that towards the end. Okay, so this, what, what kind of tips would you suggest then for, let's start with people not being able to get to sleep, or is it or the same tips all the way through? Um, well, if I just say that I had a lady just over a week ago who she said, what do you suggest for waking up four or five times a night? And I said, well, if I can get you to sleep, you won't wake up four or five times a night. And by implementing just one of the tips, two days later, she's sleeping a solid seven hours. Um, so she didn't have to worry about how she would get back to sleep. So that's my main aim is to go back to root cause so that people do fall asleep and they stay asleep and they wake up feeling better. Because by not sleeping, you're actually shortening your lifespan. It will kill you. You either sleep or you die, essentially. Um, there's no nice way of putting that. It will also predispose you to so many um, illnesses. You'll, you'll gain weight. Um, there's, a, there's a whole science behind why you will gain weight with various hormones that are involved. Um, you can be predisposed to diabetes type 2. And again, I had another lady who just by starting to sleep, after three months, not only brought down her blood pressure to the normal range, but she also is now no longer pre-diabetic because she's sleeping. And I think people have forgotten that sleep is there, like water. Water is one of my tips as well. Sleep is there because it's an essential nutrient almost Absolutely. to the body. So and it's everything sort of, kind of reverse now, isn't it? They start looking at the blood pressure and the diabetes and treating that, and they don't go back to the, this is why we call it the five foundations of health. They don't go back to the five foundations of health and say, right, okay, let's get your sleep right. I'm not, we're not talking sleeping tablets here. We're talking no. changing habits and that kind of thing. So give, yeah. give me, give me, give me one of your sleep tips to start right. with. Where well, would the you start? Tip, the top tip, which you said you were like going to touch tips. on, the top tip, which you said you were going to talk about later in the week, is to drink water. You need to be adequately hydrated. And people go, well, how does that relate to, to sleep? Your body is a machine. You wouldn't drive your car without putting petrol in it or diesel. So you, why would you drive your body without putting water in it? It's essential for life. And again, people go, well, what do you know about it? Well, I do know about it. Um, I had a guy who was 20 stone in weight. He was only drinking about a litre, a litre and a half. When I went into his consultation and we dug deep and found out what was going on, he used to sleep when he was four stone lighter and was adequately hydrated. He changed jobs, he became sedentary at a desk, barely drank water, wasn't sleeping. So I said to him, right, can you start increasing your water? And we'd worked out that for his body mass, he needed to be drinking about four litres of water a day. Um, there is a formula, but it's just much easier to say to people, look at the colour of your pee. If it's clear, <laughs> you're hydrated. Sorry, yeah. you know, just come in the morning talking about pee, but... No, bring it, it on, bring it on. Look, That's look what behind I you, when you, before you flush, you know, if it's bright, if it's a dark colour, you're not hydrated. Yeah. And this guy, over the course of six weeks, he started up in his water intake. I checked in with him every week. Guess what? He started sleeping. It's, it's not the only answer. Sleep is very complex multifaceted things come into it um, which I'll, I'll go through very briefly so water be hydrated that will make you fast like you say we're doing i'm doing a whole half an hour yeah live tomorrow all about water and why we why we want you to drink and what, what that's all about so um mm. that, that's amazing that we've tied that in so beautifully and again yeah. five, oh, where's my hand five foundations of health yeah so, and, and that's, they, that's my ethos if there are five uh, well there's five elements of health as you say I, I i say water light air nutrition and another element that people have forgotten about is the earth's magnetic field but i'll come on to that later yeah so no, we'll come that later that's, yeah, that's, I really want to talk about that because that's that comes into the because you know like I say slightly different, but my one is grounding, which is the yes. yeah, so yeah. that's that yeah, same yeah. sort of idea. But I think but rather than lose people, let's come back. Sleep yeah. tip number two. two. Top tip yeah. number two is <laughs> top tip number two is this is the one that people go what? It's to remove your mobile phone and all electronic devices from your bedside table and if necessary from the bedroom itself. And if it has to be in your bedroom, put it onto flight mode because those devices are emitting what we call electromagnetic frequencies and they are upsetting your own energy field. And I've had so, it's, it, I love it now because people go, do what? I say, just try it, try it. Why do you need your phone next to your bed? Now I accept that people have elderly relatives which they may want to hear from at the moment. It's not like your teenagers are out late at night at the moment because they shouldn't be, as we know. 
Um, but if you are on call, then I would suggest moving the phone at least a meter away from the bed and nowhere near your head. Um, allied to that is if you wear a Fitbit to tell you how you sleep and you're not sleeping, take it off, put it away from the bed and see what happens and the magic will happen. It may not happen on the first night, but certainly with one of my clients, by night two, she was sleeping. And she went, this is incredible. And I went, yes, because mobile phones, if you go deep into the uh, settings of mobile phones, there's a thing that says they haven't been proved safe within five millimeters of the body. And people are going around with them in their pockets, down their bras. You know, I'm not anti-mobile phones. They're great. They're a great invention if used properly. So um, in terms of them being close to your bed, I suggest moving them right away. Put them in another room if you have to be on call for someone. Put it so that you can hear it if it rings, but it isn't in your energy field. Yeah, and it does work. So if you combine the water and moving the phone, that in itself has helped people already. Okay, that's that's great to hear. And like you say, that's you know, the people use it as their alarm clock, don't they? So they, you know, I mean, I know my kids do. They, they drive me insane. They've got, you know, they've got the phone sort of here, ready to you know fall asleep with it still, you know. I'm glad you yeah, mentioned that because that people say, I can't turn my phone off. I need it as an alarm clock. Well, back in the day, we had alarm clocks and we still got, you know, we still got to work. We still got the kids to school. We still did everything we needed to do. And that alarm well, clock. My, my phone, my, my phone alarm still goes off on airplane mode. So there's no, there's no reason to worry about that. I just, you know, I, I literally put onto airplane. I've always put onto airplane mode and then um, the alarm still goes off. So that kind of doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> But yeah. there's an airplane mode, yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's, it's not difficult to do, is it? It's quite um, no, quite easy no. thing. And we are generally addicted to our phones and the likes and the comments. And um, and, and leading on from that is top tip three. Oh, three! <laughs> is to have a bedtime routine. Babies have generally a bedtime routine, or we try to implement a bedtime routine. So why have we lost that as adults? You know, why do we perhaps... We're on our phone or our device right up to the minute we go to bed, sending that last email, checking that last comment or like, and then we expect to go to sleep. So our brains are wired. Unless you have a blue light filter on your device or you wear those amber glasses, the wavelength from that light is the same as sunlight. So your brain is subconsciously thinking, well, it's daylight. I don't need to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, why would I go to sleep? So in the same way that a baby has a wind out or a toddler has a wind down routine, we should have a wind down routine and that might be putting the device away like Rangan Chatterjee suggests for a, an hour before bed, perhaps reading a book, listening to music, perhaps meditating, doing a, a, a journal dump. So dump all the thoughts that are bothering you onto a journal. That, that's in fact another tip, tip four. We sort of... Because it's just, you know, once I start, there's so many intermingled things that you need to think about. And definitely coming off technology and perhaps not watching um, a violent film or a, a horror film or something like that. Certainly with keep on the news. Well, that's tip five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're zooming through them now. <laughs> well, yeah, we're zooming. So tip five is there's a lot of negativity on social media and in the news. And, and it, can, it can pull you down energetically. It can make you fearful. What does that do? That lowers your immune response. You know, you, you, you start feeling sad you feel anxious that's not going to do you any good so i would certainly say limit exposure to negativity um don't watch end-to-end -end news um pick, pick a time you're going to watch the news preferably not just before bed and, and stick with it um yeah. it, it's really pertinent at the moment so so you can see how having a routine so an hour before you would perhaps think it, this is an ideal obviously you know life isn't ideal i appreciate that in an ideal world, you would have been hydrated during the day. You would leave your phone out of the bedroom. You would have stopped looking at screens an hour before bed. Um, you might have a nice relaxing bath. I can't. I'm postmenopausal. I would get too hot to go to bed. So I might I might sit and put my feet in a bath of Epsom, a basin of Epsom salts just to detox up through the feet and relax the body ready for sleep. Uh, it really is about letting the body know that you're going to go to sleep which comes on to top tip six. Oh. <laughs> oh, six can't do it, can't even see my hands. Caffeine, mm. caffeine. I did a live on this yesterday. 
<clears throat> in the body during the day, something called adenosine builds up and increases in um, the amount. And it binds to what the adenosine receptors. And that binding actually causes you to be drowsy. Caffeine can bind to those same receptors. So the adenosine receptors don't recognize, they just let it bind. So it's sort of tipping out the adenosine and going, way. It's stimulating rather than relaxing. So that coffee that you're drinking perhaps periodically during the day is staying in your body for something like six hours. The half-life of caffeine is about six hours. Wow. So the cheeky little that. coffee, you know, the cheeky little coffee at five o'clock in the evening, 50% of it is still whizzing around in your brain tissue at 11 o'clock at night. Now, there are people who can drink an espresso at bedtime and go to sleep. Sleep, yeah. And, and that, that it's very much genetic. It depends how your body processes this caffeine. Everybody's unique. I would just say if you are drinking copious amounts of coffee and you're not... Or Coca-Cola or, or even tea for some people. Well, some of the herbal teas apparently and the green teas and even decaffeinated still have caffeine in them. So I suggest that you read the labels um because that, that's just countering what the body's trying to do it's yeah. trying to make you sleepy you're sleep deprived so you're having the, co the coffee to keep you going but it's it's counteracting what the body's trying to do and it's just a vicious circle um, yeah. i know we all we all like our coffee but preferably not after about two o'clock in the afternoon if you are struggling with sleep and for every cup of coffee you have i would suggest having a large glass of water because just to balance it out yeah. Water, water, you know, water is crucial, isn't it? As you're going to come on and talk about. Yeah. The, th the thing that's interesting there as well is it's, it's not one size fits all. I mean, like um, I have a I, I can't drink caffeine at all anymore. Um, I used to love my coffee, but I, I've just had to come right off it because it just started to really affect me. But and then, you know, like you say, I my, you know, my son drinks coffee at like 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. And no, no, no phase whatsoever. So it is about learning what works for you, isn't yes. it? And listening yeah. to what works for you. Yes. And everyone's bodies are different. Everyone's metabolism is different. We have different, you know, processes that are harder for us and easier for others and so on and so forth. So it's about, you know, starting to take all this information and say, okay, what fits for me really mm. is And yeah. give it a go. I mean, have a day without yeah. caffeine, to see, you know, or without caffeine after two o'clock and see, see what happens and start playing around with some of these ideas. Yeah. I know the day I the day I gave up caffeine because mid 40s, I was intolerant to quite a lot of things and caffeine was one of them. And they said, do it slowly. Well, I didn't do it slowly. I went cold turkey. Oh, the headaches that I had for a couple of days because my body was going, where's the caffeine? Where's the caffeine? And that was when I'd got um, how. Yeah, the kids were still fairly young. Um, not particularly old. But yeah, I would suggest if you're going to cut the caffeine, perhaps do it gradually rather than cold turkey yeah. like i yeah, do because yeah. it, it will give you a headache and some people need to be careful with decaffeinated because that can be have its own problems some people think oh, i do drink decaf well actually you've got to ask the question what what how did it become decaf and what was the process and what chemicals have they used to you know mm. to create that so you know it's it, you know i mean I, I have heard that if you're going to drink coffee the best thing to do is drink fresh freshly ground beans, you know, fresh coffee, stay away from the jars and kind of really, you know, if you're going to have it, have it as a, as a real proper coffee rather than mm. anything else, because that's the least kind of processed, for want of a better word, isn't it? Mm. So we've got some lovely people watching us. Hello, Anne. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to pop them on into the chat room. We can see them and we can answer them straight away. And the other thing is, is if you're watching this after, it's been live, that makes sense. Yeah. Rather than not watching dead. Replay, watching in replay. Thank you, that's the word. If you're watching it in replay, um, then um, please put questions. If you've got any questions in the in the box, and me or Marion will keep an eye on that and be able to answer them for you. So um, you can still kind of interact with us. That's what I want to say. Um, so, okay, how are we getting on? So how are we, we're whipping through these tips. We've got so, six uh, tips so far. Um, and, and what you were saying about looking at the person holistically, that's what I do. Is So if somebody is struggling with sleep and they, they've perhaps tried a few things, I tend to be the end resort because people think, oh, well, I've tried this, tried this. I've only got medication. No, 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 no. That's not the last resort because there are other things. So I will do what I call a sleep MOT where I ask questions, you know, how much water? Do you have your phone by your bed? Do you wear a Fitbit? Other things like, have you got an Alexa in the house? Is that turned on? Have you got a smart meter? 
all these things with clients that I've experienced are upsetting their energy field. So our own magnetic field is about 15 foot. It radiates out around us. So um, if we were sat in the same room, socially safe, we would still be in each other's magnetic field. Um, and that magnetic field is getting weaker and weaker because of technology. There's a simple kinesiology test you can do to show how by holding your phone, it weakens your strength. Um, you can support that energy field in other ways. So there, there's so much to consider. So I will look at what, what's going on in their life. I'll, it's about half an hour. They'll go away with a sleep prescription, as it were, a natural holistic alternative. It's up to them whether they implement it. If that then doesn't work after, say, six weeks, then we go down another route, because uh, which will involve the magnetic field of the Earth. So is that, can I do top tip seven now? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So as I've touched on, technology surrounds us. We're living in an electronic soup. Um, quite often these days, and it's no judgment, it's an observation. Young children are, they have access to a phone or an iPad. Um, the, the room might have um, a baby monitor that's emitting electromagnetic frequencies because uh, it's linked to Wi-Fi. Uh, so you have to think about all the electronics in your house. The Wi-Fi is zooming around your house through walls. You can't see it, but it's there. This can lead to anxiety because it's upsetting this natural field of the body. We were designed to be in nature. We were designed to be out barefoot on the earth with the negative ions from the earth coming up through our feet, which is where you talked about grounding in your introduction. The far infrared energy from the sun, that's also um, a very healing energy. And um, so you've got far infrared, negative ions, or negative ions from the air as well, which is why people quite often feel really um, comforted when they're near trees or waterfalls, because that's given out a lot of negative ions. Our body needs those things. And the way we live, surrounded in this electronic soup, uh, with rubber-soled shoes that are perhaps insulating us from the earth, we've got air conditioning blowing the same air, your breath, you know, you're talking about air, that's recycling the same air again and again. Um, I was co constant cold when I used to work in the NHS with um, air con blowing air over our heads the whole time. We'd all get a cold if one got it, everybody got it. Not a great invention in my opinion that's my opinion um and so the electronic suit the disconnect from nature the fact that many of us don't go out and stand on the earth perhaps because we well some people can't at the moment can they they're cooped up in a flat they don't have access to a garden if they're at risk they can't go out anyway um which you know my heart goes out to them it must be so awful um, but there are ways of having grounding in the house. Um, there are products out there, grounding mats, grounding sheets that you can either sleep on or put your feet on when you're working at the laptop. And again, when people were working in offices, they might have not just one screen, but several screens. And those screens are bombarding your body. You know, no wonder people are going home tense, anxious. They can't switch off. They can't sleep because they'll go home. They'll work at home. It's getting that work-life balance which I think is starting to happen with people not working in offices now. So the, the, electro, the electromagnetic field of the earth is the fifth element of health, which we've forgotten about. Yeah. And can I quickly tell you about an experiment that was, that was carried out? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. Um, they had a, what they call a mu room, which is a, a nickel lead alloy, and it blocks out the geomagnetic force of the earth. I think that's the combination of metals. I'd have to check that. Anyway, they put a group of healthy volunteers into this room who were all coherent, perfectly fine like you and I matter of opinion but you know they put them in this room they took away the magnetic field of the earth and within minutes they became disorientated emotional they started crying they didn't know they didn't know where they were why they were crying they they ached for no particular reason and you think how many people these days feel like that? So disconnected absolutely disconnected. and you know as a society as a world we need to get back out there and be connected um, with, with that field. So if you think about what people do during the day, all of that is, is building you up to be wired almost and you cannot switch off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's so, so important just to consider. And if you think I'm bonkers, try it, people, if you're watching and listening, try it and just see what happens. I mean, the, 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 there's lots of different ways that that can be done. So the cheapest possible way of doing that is to um, go outside barefoot on the ground. That's the, that's the way. 
And they reckon about 20 minutes twice a day, I think, is what the, the kind of recommendation that I've heard. I don't know about you. So that's, that's, that's you know, cheapest chips. But then, that, like you say, there are grounding mats, there's grounding. There's also, you've got insoles for shoes that you can wear that yeah. magnetic, that kind of thing, aren't they? And these are all products. We don't really want to go too much into no, we're not going products, to that. but if people are interested and want to know more, please put messages in them and we can come and talk to you, chat to you one-to-one, -one because this is we're trying to do this as a, as a kind of advice session, but it is really, really powerful. I mean, I have a, a grounding sheet that I sleep on, that I plug it, you know, you, you plug it in, but when we first, um, you plug it in, but you're, you don't turn the plug on or off, it's, it, you're plugging into the earthing of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, we used to have one, um, I lost, we had a wire going out and a, and a pole going into the ground in the earth, and we used to put our feet on it in the evening. And it was amazing, you put the feet on this mat and your feet would literally tingle as the whole kind of balancing was happening. And it was like, it was shocking, because you're thinking, well, all I am is connected to the the ground i'm not connected to anything else i'm having this reaction so i'm really passionate about it and i've also had the thing where i when i when fitbits first came out i had one didn't last long at all went along to a um, bioresonance um, session which is where they're checking your different energy frequencies and everything else and she couldn't get my my regular um energy frequency to to balance so um, she couldn't work out why, and she kept saying it doesn't make sense, it's not balancing, and everything else was working okay, but this, this general energy frequency wasn't balancing. And then suddenly she said to me, and this was back in the day when it was very early on, what are you wearing on your wrist? And I thought it's a you know, Fitbit, she'd take it off. So we took it off, moved it right away, balanced like that. It was it was shocking to see the, the impact that was having on my energy field. Um, mm -hmm. So I yeah, I'm completely agreeing with that. We've got a question from Becky Bard. I'll just come back to that. We can go back to that in a minute as well, if that's okay. I, I can't see any questions where I am. So you'll have oh, okay. to tell me what so, the questions are. Any tips on broken sleep in young children that probably link to anxiety, please? Um, again, what is their routine? You know, I, I don't know. So I, I, I'm just asking questions because this is going in blind. But what is their routine during the day? Do they have exposure to these electronic devices? I don't know, perhaps they don't, perhaps they do, but it is about um, limiting that, restricting it. Um, are, they they drink, are they drinking enough water? Yeah, are they getting outside where they can? Um, it, it, it's the things I've talked about already. Um, reflexology, if, that, if the lady is near um, a reflexologist, um, or we can, we can show them the, the they points. Can show them on oh. Zoom, yeah. I've been doing that with a few clients, is showing them points. I can't see my hand. Showing them points um, on the hand to work. Um, the pineal and the pituitary are particularly good for helping with sleep, but just generally relaxing. So, um, Can you show us those two points, Marion? Would you mind? Yeah. The pituitary is in the middle of the thumb. It's easier to work on the hands. Where's the camera? There we are. So where the um, whirl of the fingerprint is, if you go in, it's a, it's an approximate. But if you go in there, that's the pituitary, which is in your head. That's the master endocrine gland. So I would press that and hold one, two, three, both thumbs, obviously, because you want to do both sides of the body to balance it. And then in line with the base of the thumbnail on the outer edge of the thumb, about there, you can also press for the pineal gland, which again is to do with regulation of sleep hormones. Um, so you, you could try that. I think a general relaxing um, reflexology routine on, on the child's hand or feet, um, and there are there are videos out there. Or if Is it Becky, did you say? Because I yes. can't see any name. If Becky wants to contact me or somebody nearer her, I'm sure we could guide you through um, some sort of demonstration on what to do with your child. So it is complex. And, and Becky, my heart goes out to you because, as I say, I've said at the beginning, I don't know if you saw... I was sleep deprived for 23 months with an older child. It's murder, absolute murder. Um, and you can try everything under the sun and it still doesn't work. Um, but can I just make a couple of other suggestions. I know that um, one of the things we talk a lot about as well is having a window open yeah. or having, um, having a plant in the room that gives you enough oxygen. So sometimes what happens is, is that we keep our children's rooms, you know, windows closed, you know, the, the central heating being on and so the air is dried out. So there can be like, putting some uh, humidifier in the room to get some moisture in the air. Uh, like I say, a plant like a peace lily or um, aloe vera plant actually gives off a lot more oxygen at night, don't they? So they're very good. Spider plant, plant's good as well. Yeah, plant's good as well. There's a whole, if you go online, there's a whole list of all the kind of like 
ox nighttime oxygen giving plants there, there's a whole list of them uh, or else actually like i say having a window open and the other thing is you can have something like lavender oil diffusing in the room you can put lavender oil in their bath before they go to sleep so it's all about because if it's anxiety what you're looking to do there is to calm their nervous system down before they actually go into that sleep place and so if you haven't done a calming of the nervous system down and that's partly what the routine is Marion was saying that routine of letting the body know it's time to go to sleep. But if they're if they're in that anxious state, sometimes you've got to bring them out of that fight and flight anxious state first before you can get them to calming down. So um, making sure that, like you say, they're running around getting enough exercise, but also, like I say, things like lavender oil, massage, reflexology will help to actually calm that anxious system down ready for them to be able to go into a deep sleep. Um, and what tends to happen, as Marion was saying, the broken sleep can be that fight and flight what was that noise what was that noise what was you know that kind of thing that, that's happening so if you can calm that system down first that can make a huge difference um lots of you know like gentle lullabies um depends on the age i, oh, I do know that these two little ones they're gorgeous they're twins they're beautiful oh, right, okay. <laughs> so gorgeous but that kind of thing yeah so try some of those tips that we've put on today becky and if you're still having problems then just give us a shout because we could there's more we can talk you through with that as well yeah i would also say becky if you have got um, uh, um an alexa perhaps to turn that off at night um i i dare suggest you turn your router off at night i know that some people would say oh no it's going to damage the router it won't charge up as fast but we've done that in the past turn the router off because that router sends the signals all around the house. And in terms, you, you actually pinched one of my tips because it was the environment of the bedroom. <laughs> However, I would also say, um, particularly with adults, if they've got a metal bed frame, that metal bed frame is acting like an antenna for all the electricity in the house. So you're, and, and again, the mattress, if you've got metal springs in the mattress, that again is acting like an antenna and attracting it. So if you, dare i say turn the router off turn everything off because why do you need it on at night there are people who have teenage kids who want to be up to three o'clock in the morning playing on various playstations and things been there done that you know they've survived but but that's something to consider is that those frequencies are around um around your body upsetting it it's really really interesting in terms of um the environment as well as you mentioned have a window open i think the amp the ideal temperature is 16 to 18 degrees c you want it nice and dark uh, so either blackout blinds um which would work for children for adults it could be a sleep mask it, it's a natural fibers for your um nightwear, if you wear nightwear natural fibers for bedding so nice you know cotton if you can afford it um you don't want anything that's going to make you too hot because the temperature you're at your temperature in bed is important too so you pinched it in advance Sorry, but that's actually that's actually really interesting because I mean, especially for young kids, it's very difficult to know what their temperature is, what mm. how to control their temperature, isn't it? You tend to sort of worry that they're going to get cold at night, so you mm. tend to sort of fuck them up, and then there's the risk of them getting hot. And I mean, you know, that idea of you know the kids go to bed before you go to bed, and so the heating might still be on, and then you know they get so there's that whole kind of you know that the the, the temperature is, is quite a big thing, isn't it? Really, mm. you've got to try, you've got to mess about, you know, try and test things out, really. Yeah, um, yeah and so, so. You know, another tip don't have a heavy meal too close to bedtime because your poor old liver's still going to be trying to get rid of it between 1 and 3 a.m it, it you know kinesiology um Laura, Lorna would know about the chinese body clock and when different organs are doing different things um i mean there's so many things to consider um when um becky asked about anxiety and i'm i'm not pushing any products but i just want to tell you my experience with children um, and young teenagers if you can get a magnetic field onto their body in the form of a bracelet then i have noticed and been told repeatedly <clears throat> that that helps calm the nervous system so you were talking about calming that down activating the parasympathetic nervous system you want the body to calm down and it seems to be working wonders it, it's an inexpensive item um which if there is no other option, it might be something to consider. Um, can you show us, have you got one there, Marion? Can you show us what it's like? I haven't, no. C can you give me two seconds to just disappear? I should have had one. Okay. One second, I'll, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll just do a dance or something while we're waiting. <laughs> have we got any more questions for Marion? I hope this is being helpful. If you can just kind of let us know in the comments how it's all going for you, because obviously, it's all about helping you to, to kind of connect with this, um, as well as the, the um, magnetic. Note to, note to self for future lives. 
So it looks like that. Can you see? Yeah. Um, it's got three magnets on it. Um, that's the smaller size, which is 19 centimetres, and there's a slightly larger one. Um, it helps children and adults alike with anxiety. Um, just something to consider. Um, can I tell you about this magnetic field? Because people go, you're bonkers. I had a 14-year-old child with, um, I think I'm allowed to say autism these days. Is, am I still allowed to use that, what, that term? Wasn't sleeping. I don't know. Uh, wasn't sleeping. If he was lucky, he'd get three hours sleep a night. Would pace the room. Also had other issues going on. So mum and dad would take it in turns to stay up all night. They had to work as well. The impact on that family was horrendous. And they'd been referred to me through somebody else. And I lent them what I call a magnetic sleep system. So it's a topper, a quilt and a pillow. I'm, I'm just telling you this is what I did. Lent it to him. They used a Fitbit to monitor what was going on. I wouldn't ordinarily say do it, but we wanted to see what was going on. He got into the system and he went straight to sleep and he slept all night, every night for 14 days while he borrowed it. They had all the record of what had happened. He'd gone into that deep restorative sleep. They gave the system back to me. He stopped sleeping. So it shows that that magnetic field is so important for cocooning the body. And, you know, it may be that you, you don't need that, but if you turn as much of the Wi-Fi off as possible so it's not subconsciously aggravating the, um, the body, keeping it wired, it works. And that's yeah. the fifth element of health, you know. Um, if you don't, you know, that, that's fine. That's an expensive option. Well, it's not an expensive option because it can change your life. That's one option. But a natural, cheap option, turn everything off. Turn all the Wi-Fi, everything you can. Okay. And get outside there. barefoot on the ground as much as possible. Yes, that's, yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. That's I mean, yeah. like, we, you know, we, we do things like the smart dots that we've talked about with other people as well. So, And Shunglite Crystal is amazing yes. for that sort of thing as well. So yeah. there's, there's options, and we will talk about that more another time, I'm sure. But it's lovely to know all these different options. Mm -hmm. um, Tanya's got Moret said, thank you, that's been really helpful. That's lovely, Moret, thank you for your feedback. Tanya is saying, I often wait with a dry mouth. Any tips? Do you mean dry mouth first thing in the morning or do you mean dry mouth during the night? If you can answer that one. Um, any tips about that, Marion? Well, my first question would, would always be, are you, are you hydrated? How much water are you drinking? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what stage you joined. Is it Tanya, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what stage you joined us, Tanya, but certainly you should be drinking enough water such that your pee is clear. Um, and I, I find as a therapist, when I talk to people and say, well, why don't you drink water? And go, well, I don't like the taste of it. And I get that because in some areas of the country, it's quite awful. Um, so people might want to consider a water filter. There's very, you know, you can have water filters from a, from a Brita up to the price of a second-hand car and in between, um, but you certainly... Bottled water is an environmental no-no, really, with the plastic crisis. Tap water does have contaminants in it. It, it, it in some areas, has chlorine. I can smell it. Um, that's not great for the gut. Gut health, that's another tip. Gut health. You know, how many antibiotics have people been on? Um, what's their diet like? Um, it, it's, it's, it's such a complicated thing, sleep. You know, there's another thing. I'm not qualified to do this, but I know you've got people in your clinic that would be look at whether they're perhaps folate and magnesium deficient as well. Um, it's yeah. that's what I mean. It's so many things to look at yeah. when you're looking at why somebody's not sleeping. Which is why you start with the simple, basic things like yeah. the water, the environment, the you know yeah. all those things to start with, because those are things you can control immediately from tonight. So Tanya's saying it's dry, dry mouth in the night. I do drink, but we'll try to up my intake. Hot flushes don't help. So we're in a hormonal side of things there as well. So that might be worth the, the two um, reflexology points that you talked about, the pituitary, well, with, with, I know might help with that as yeah, well. But the pituitary and also the um, uterus and the ovaries, which, where's my hand? Along, it, it's easier to do it on the feet actually, but either side of the wrist, there's little indentations, sort of, I can't turn my wrist around that way, but you've got the uterus on the side of the thumb and the it's ovaries. In can you see? Yeah. So there, those two yeah. places there. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you're having hormonal problems at the moment and can't get to anyone, it might be worth um, with the index finger, pad of your index finger and the thumb going into those little indentations and pressing and just pulsating. And then the fallopian tubes are across here 
where the wrist bends naturally. Oh, I don't know where the camera is, sorry. Where the wrist bends naturally. So you can literally make a C shape with one hand, clamp it on and rotate the hand round like that. Or keep your hand still, where's the camera? Keep your hand still and rotate the wrist like that. And that's actually subconscious, that's working. The fallopian tubes, uterus and ovaries all in one on both hands as well. Um, again, that bracelet I showed you has known to regulate. It's not, it's not intended for that, but it has um, regulated quite a few people's hot flushes as well. So um, right. it's all about bringing balance to the body, isn't it? Isn't the body amazing? When you give it what it needs, which is water, night, air, nutrition, and grounding the elements of the earth, the body does amazing things. Yeah. It knows what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing I suppose that we've got to touch on as well is that some people's medication will be affecting their sleep. Yeah. if they're on pharmaceutical medication. So um, that, again, drinking lots of water, because one of the things that, one of the side effects of taking a lot of pharmaceutical medication is, is, is there's a toxin overload for the body, mm. and water is a good way of wash, of kind of literally flushing that out. So again, that will support those sorts of problems as well, won't they? Yeah. So Tanya's saying, okay, thank you. You're very welcome. You're very um, welcome. Just up the water. Yes. <laughs> And I think the general rule of thumb is if you're a larger bodied person, you need to drink more water. Just drink until your pee is clear. That, that's a, a good rule of thumb, really. Okay. Um, and this is for normal, healthy people, not people with kidney problems, obviously. There's, there's always an exception to a rule. Okay. And Anne's just said, where do we get the bracelets? So oh, we're... From me, but I can, I can put the link below. Um, it, it, because this wasn't intended to be a sales pitch, we, we're offering tips, aren't we, and advice. Um, but yes, certainly I can. They, are, they are very, very good, and they're very, very useful. And as you know, we find with the smart dots as well. I keep doing that just to show people that's a smart dot on the back of my necklace. Um, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very similar idea: is trying to kind of get yourself, get your energy field away from all the not being affected by all the kind of electromagnetic energy. So um, yeah, both are very, very effective. So um, yeah, very good. Different, to different approaches to all sorts of things. I mean, some people advocate CBC can't speak cbd oil for sleep and um, that's another i mean there's so many things you can you yeah. can consider for sleep and like you say magnesium magnesium is good because epsom salt baths we can go back to that one as well is a really good thing to do before you go to sleep mm. if you can cut the baths um and that's because of the, it, it detoxes but also it, it takes in the magnesium the magnesium is part of what our nervous system needs to calm down isn't it it's really important mm. and epsom salt baths is a very nice way of doing it. and the good thing is magnesium if it's too much the body just kind of it's not, you know, you can't really overload yourself, really, can you? Mm. Especially not with this sort of bar. Is that the yeah. same as the B vitamins? If you drink, if you take too many B vitamins, you pee it out and your pee's bright yellow. Is that, yeah, the first time I was started taking B vitamins, I thought, what on earth? So if you're taking B vitamins, your pee won't be clear. So, but just drink until your, your skin's plumped and you, you're functioning um, more optimally, really. Yeah. If anybody wants to know how much water, till your pee's clear. <laughs> Are there any other questions? We've been going for quite. A, we've been going for forty-two minutes, Marion. Wow! That's long. Well, I can't stop. <laughs> no. I think if, any, if anybody's got any questions, they can always post them below, and then I can come back in later and answer them. And if they want yeah, to private message absolutely. me, they can. Um, I think that's enough to be going on with. I think that's quite a lot. We've talked about the environment. We've talked about what you're doing leading up to bed. What you're doing during the day. Um, limiting negativity. I mean, there's there's diary dumping, as we've touched on. There's meditation. There's breathing. Um, I'm sure you've got specialists who can talk about um, breathing to relax the body, tensing the body, and gradually working your way up, relaxing it. I've, I've tried that when I was having problems sleeping. Um, so yeah, Absolutely. any questions, people? Then please ask, and we'll do our very best to answer. Yeah. No, it's been fantastic, and I hope everyone's found it helpful. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of questions from that as well. So massive, massive thank you for coming on and, and, and giving us all that wonderful advice. It's been really, really good. And uh, thank you very much. So we'll just say goodbye to Mary. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Just take Mary off. There we go. And just to finish off with now, just to remind you that tomorrow I'll be talking about why we keep banging on about drinking water. Obviously, that's been a huge um, piece of it being talked about there. So we'll talk about that a bit more tomorrow. And um, Wednesday, we've got Tracy Winterbourne coming on doing some beautiful skin tips and some um, facial reflexology and how to look after your skin at the moment. And then 
Friday, we've got Lorna doing the fire element um, of the five elements. So and anyone that saw the wood element will know how amazingly useful that was. Um, so hopefully that's been good for you. Thank you if you've got any questions. But thank you for everyone that's watching either now or later. It's really appreciated. And just hope you know that we're here. If you need any help or support, if you've got any concerns, give us a shout. Um, let us know. Drop us a message on Facebook. Drop us an email. We'll phone you. We'll talk to you. We've got Zoom people. We've got ways of contacting you. There's a lot we can do to support you, even when we can't actually physically be in the same vicinity as you. So any problems at all, let us know. But meanwhile, thank you once again for joining us. Bye-bye. Take care. This is awkward because I take a bye and then I have to still take time to end the broadcast. So I'm going now. Bye.